Hi, this is Don Nelson, editor of the Additive Report and host of the Additive Manufacturing Minute. I am here at Rapid and TCT 2022. I am with Walter Voigt, who is the founder of 3D Adaptive, which is a desktop metal company. And what 3D Adaptive does is they develop polymer resins for 3D printing. And it's usually done on a DLP, or it's always done on a DLP style printer. And a fascinating new product that they're developing is called Freefoam. And what is interesting about Freefoam is that when a part is 3D printed from it, this part here, uh, and it is put in an oven for approximately 60 seconds, it increases in size two to seven times. And isn't that cool? And so, Walter, if you can, Briefly explain the chemistry of how this works. Sure, thanks, Don. So this chemistry uh, works through a process called photopips, which stands for polymerization-induced phase separation. So it's less about the chemistry and more about the secondary structure of these polymer chains. Essentially, we have these little balloons inside the printed part that are about two microns big that when you heat them up to 160 C, they evolve a gas, CO2, that starts blowing up these little balloons. In most foams, those balloons expand until they pop, and then the foam, foam collapses on itself, unless you foam it in a mold. In free foam, you can foam it free from molds, free from all this process equipment that's needed to make foams. The chemistry itself stabilizes these particles as they're foaming. So as these balloons are getting bigger, the polymer reacts back against them and keeps them to a very consistent shape. So when we go from here to here, we get very consistent pore sizes. In this case, it's about 32 to 42 microns big. And so the particles on this side of the network are the exact same size as the ones over here, giving us incredible dimensional tolerance in every vector that we could draw across this part. This allows us to hit some of the very tight dimensional tolerance specs for applications like car seats, which you see here, mattresses, pillows, shoes, medical devices. And so we're really excited how this technology is gonna start reshaping throughput models and cost models in additive manufacturing. Now, you know, it seems to me that uh, you, you, you said the word mattress. Like, conceivably, you could make a mattress over, you know, in, in, in Asia, and because of shipping costs and what, if it was like small, and then when it got to the United States, let's say, it was heated and expanded, I mean, you've saved a ton of space on a ship. Absolutely. A mattress is, is probably one to 4% dense to be comfortable and to support weight. But if you ship something in a cargo container that's, that's one to 4% dense, you can't fit too many mattresses in that shipping container. But if you take the pre-foamed version of the mattress, and moreover, if you even compress this down a little bit, you could have a mattress the size of a big organic, uh, organic chemistry textbook. You could ship that around the world as a solid, dense piece of plastic, and then in 60 seconds, have it pop open to maybe a full king-size mattress. Well, well, thanks for ex expanding our imaginations here, Walter, and uh, thanks to all of you for tuning in. This is Don Nelson. We'll see you next time.